Hey, so 18 years of minimalism, right? What changed? Um, this video is about my experience of 18 years of minimalism. It's not how, about how I became a minimalist. It's about what changed throughout that period of time, how I changed, how my view on minimalism changed. And if you want to know more about how I exactly became a minimalist and what that was like 18 years ago, then I ju just watch uh, the other video I made about this topic. It's linked in the description. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay, first of all, after such a long time, the most prominent thing I think is uh, gratitude. For a lot of things that I maybe wouldn't care about so much um, if I wasn't a minimalist. And that's also essentially because I think minimalism is in a way materialism. So often I find myself grateful for little things that are, I don't know, cute? Like for instance having pottery that I adore and like, sounds stupid right? But if you, if you have like a, a cute cup, <laughs> okay, like I don't know. I have these cups and I bring them um, when, I'm, when I go on vacation and I bring them home like um, handmade cups and I, I don't have so many but let me show you one. There's still coffee in it. Here, I'm gonna drink it. And this is a pretty unique thing. It's just like it even broke at some uh, point and I, I uh, glued it together again. So. Um, yeah, it reminds me of a trip, it reminds me of a time in my life and it's the kind of meaningful possession that I want to have as a minimalist. And yes, I still bring these kinds of souvenirs from, from trips. Sometimes every, I don't know, five years or something, three years, I bring home a new cup and I have a special relationship with these cups because there's something from, I don't know, from all over the world. And I would describe the feeling that when I'm having my coffee in the morning from that special cup, um, that's gratitude, right? That's gratitude. And it's for a material thing. It's not just for, oh yeah, I'm so lucky to be alive or something generic like that. It's often about things. It's often about material possessions. And I don't really think that that's a bad thing. I actually completely embrace that because like tiny cute things in your apartment, even clothes, whatever it is, even like a journal or something, what, whatever makes your life more beautiful essentially nurtures gratitude, right? So at least that is what it's like for me. On the other hand, of course, I'm also grateful for the time with my loved ones. Not like I'm a complete materialist and like I don't care if you want to come on a trip with me. I just want to make good photos and get my cup. That's not what I meant. But in general, I think minimalism is a lot about the things that you own. So the few things that you own become so much more important. Another aspect of minimalism that is really important to me after all those years is that I see it as kind of a philosophy of life or a coping mechanism. Like, how do I deal with stuff? How do I deal with problems as a minimalist? But I'm not constantly thinking like, oh, I'm a minimalist, what do I do in my minimalist way now? No, that's not like it. But if you've done this thing for such a long time, it just, you've got a different mindset from the average person then, I guess. And uh, I don't have a hard time making decisions, for instance. I like making decisions. It's not hard to make a good decision. And part of that, I guess, is that my head is free of material problems, like normal people problems that all originate from your stuff. <laughs> no, I said, think about it, just really think about it. I mean, I'm joking here, like I don't think that, that all problems originate from stuff. But a lot of problems do, right? Let's be honest, like a lot, a lot of problems just come from stuff. Just think about having a car, like I have a car, I need one. But a lot of people wouldn't need a car, yet they have one. And they constantly complain about it. And it's, this is the case for, for a lot of things in life. It's the case for so many possessions and not making it about their impact on your life is just a little bit naive because things have an impact on your life. 
you have to take care of them. They are taking up space somewhere in your basement, I don't know. In a way they're taking up headspace and that's never very productive. So for me that mindset that I have that makes things easier for me in general comes from that free headspace, comes from the ability to have space, physical space in a room, which then kind of leads to less stress and feeling more free, feeling able to move. And in a way that sounds a little dumb, I guess, but you can know until you try, you know. So try it and then when you tried it, write a comment and tell me whether I'm right or wrong or whether you think this comes from something else. But I think truly that your possessions just have a huge impact on your psyche, have an impact on your well-being. So it makes a difference how much you have or not, especially long term. It makes it easier to make decisions. And some people describe that issue as decision fatigue. I wouldn't go that far because I think that if you're a privileged person and you live in a privileged country having no real issues, no life-threatening issues, decision fatigue is just such a scam. Like, what are you tired of? I'm not tired of deciding what I'm going to wear today, you know, there are people out there that don't even have something to wear. So no, I'm not tired of that. It's maybe mildly annoying, but that's not decision fatigue. I mean, maybe if you are a hoarder, then you get decision fatigue. But an average person that has a lot of stuff, yeah, the average person does have a lot of stuff, but is that decision fatigue? I don't know. I mean, like... Just let me know what you think about that, but I don't really think that exists. So anyway, minimalism is a coping mechanism for me when I was a teenager. It was a way for me to break free from my possessions and to be myself and to just have what I need and to just, you know, develop my own personality apart from the belongings that I had from my childhood and from my parents and so on. So that was kind of a journey to myself, I guess. So, and after overcoming that phase, after overcoming that mess, um, I got like a super clean, simple room. I um, moved out and then had my own apartment. It was very simplistic. I would say it was an extreme minimalist apartment. And then I kept that mindset and I kept that idea of coping with things using minimalism just as a tool to get rid of negative thoughts, to get rid of things that don't make my life easier and to judge things and say, well, I don't need that in my life. It doesn't make my life better. It doesn't make my life easier or anything. And that's just, that's just what, that's just what it is, you know? Anyway, I do not think and I don't want to say that there is a right or wrong way to do it. You know, like I'm, I'm just sharing my thoughts, my journey, I'm not judging you in any way, uh, how, how could I? For me, the right way was to do it fast and to do it in an extreme way. But for you, it might be better to take your time and to be a moderate minimalist or to not even, you know, call yourself a minimalist at all, just to have some minimalism in your life. Like I had all these phases and it didn't really matter to me. What mattered more to me throughout all that time was that I stayed kind of authentic, that I stayed true to myself and I wasn't like starting to be something that I don't want to be. Because that did happen and um, you know like I noticed sometimes um, that I became less minimalist, that I fell off the minimalist wagon. There's no such thing. But you know like um, when, stu when, when stuff started accumulating in my apartment because people gave me gifts or brought me furniture. For instance, my family brought me a fridge and I didn't want one. I said, no, I don't need a fridge because I don't need to drink fresh milk. I don't need to have butter. I go to the restaurant and eat most of the time um, in restaurants. I don't need food that has to be fresh from my refrigerator. And I was eating something that is called Knäckebröd or Knäckebröd, yeah, so I'm I was eating that kind of dry bread and I didn't really need a fridge for, for keeping a toast fresh, for instance, something like that. So yeah, sometimes there were these conflicts. I have kind of seen a variety of ways to be minimalist or to 
have the idea of wanting to be more minimalist and today I really can only say that there is no right or wrong, it's very individual, but I would recommend to do it fast because, you know, ripping off the band-aid and getting it over with, if you can do that, you know, if you have the opportunity to get rid of a lot of stuff, if you can afford that, I mean, for some people it's, it's not easy to afford that. Um, so you might have to sell your stuff. You might not have the option to just donate it to a charity, which is basically what I did because it was a, it was a lot of stuff that you couldn't sell anymore, like old furniture from the GDR back in the 90s or early zeroes, few thousands. <laughs> no one wanted that kind of thing. There weren't enough hipsters yet. So yeah, we had to get rid of that somehow. But if you're a mom maybe, or you've, you've got a whole family of people, you, you know you want to get rid of a lot of stuff, you've got a whole downstairs department to declutter. Um, that might not be the most sustainable and the most meaningful option for you because you might want that money, you might need it. So yes, that's pretty individual. Anyway, I am going to make a video about decluttering and how to, you know, make the most out of it, how to get it done as fast as possible because I think that really helps with the whole motivation thing and I think it's a kind of pride, you know, if you pulled it off and afterwards you can say like, look what I got rid of, all this stuff, I got rid of all of it, it's so cool, like I got so few things now, even with kids. So yeah, <laughs> I think the sooner you get there, the better you will feel. Just don't let anybody else tell you how to do it, you know, just find find out yourself and then do it. Okay, what's the next on my list? It is minimalism should go hand in hand with sustainability. Yeah, yeah, that's an important insight. And I have been practicing a kind of zero waste lifestyle, you know, I would call it less waste or low waste lifestyle for the past 10, 11 years, I guess. But before that, it kind of never occurred to me. It just wasn't on my radar that this is a thing. But today, I really think, you know, these are different times. Sustainability is everywhere. You can find information about uh, how to live sustainably, how to do zero waste everywhere. It is cheap to do that. Yeah, organic food is more expensive than normal food. But there are other ways how you can help the environment and you know that is also a thing you essentially feel very good about it. You will enjoy consuming these things more you know. That's also a huge difference in quality of life, at least for me it is. So if I was to start over with minimalism I would also ask myself how can I be a sustainable minimalist, not just like an extreme minimalist or a fancy minimalist. I would want to be a sustainable minimalist from the start. Which however brings me to point number something. Minimalism is a lifestyle, not a religion. So yeah, no, we don't need dogmatic views in minimalism. You gotta set some personal standard for yourself probably. If you want to achieve some, let's call it level of minimalism, for instance, you want uh, to have no more books. You, you have like a huge library and you say like, ah, oh, I'm sick of all my books, I want to get rid of them. All right, there you go, that's, that's your level of minimalism you want to reach, you just want to get rid of all your books, all right. If you then decide, well, I want to have like a few books that really mean something to me, you shouldn't be dogmatic about it. It, it doesn't make anything better if you can say that you have zero of something. It's the same with zero waste. It's not really zero and the people who claim that it is are probably lying. And what does it make better if you're perfect at being a minimalist? <laughs> Literally no one cares. And um, you should do that for yourself, you know. It's like, it's not like uh, you, you go outside, you leave your apartment and you're like, Hey, look, I'm such a minimalist. I have zero books now. From, f from today on, I have zero books. Have you heard? I just, like, in general, do not believe in restrictive lifestyle. Whatever it is, you know, what, whatever it is, uh, eating, buying, traveling, I don't believe in those restrictions. I don't think they are good for the human psyche. 
I think they make things unnecessarily hard for us humans. It is often easier to not have to, you know, weigh all the different options and figure out the grayscale in between black and white. We like to simplify things, to understand them better, to make them easy. And following restrictions in, in whatever lifestyle that is will make it easier to communicate that lifestyle, will make, will make it easier to say, look, I am that good, I am doing all of this, a hundred percent. Like, let's just, let's just take veganism, for, for instance. Like, that's something that I'm uh, getting a lot of questions about. Are you vegan? So I'm not vegan. To get the elephant out of the room, you know, I substitute a lot of vegetarian uh, foods with uh, vegan foods. And I buy organic food. I buy food that I know is like from a good source when it comes to dairy or eggs or something like that. But I have been a vegan in the past and... Well, maybe I'm going there again, you know, but it won't do anyone a favor if I am a perfect vegan while there are millions of people out there who eat a lot of meat. It would do a whole lot more for the environment if people would in general just eat less meat, a little less. That will make a huge difference. Not if like, you know, one person is doing it perfectly while 10 aren't doing anything. It's better if the 10 people try to make the little difference that they can. And I kind of want to encourage people to do that. So I also don't want to, you know, propagate that kind of in your face, perfect minimalism. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to show you some of my 30 non-minimalist corners in the future in some video, you know. So yeah, maybe I'm going to share some of that to keep it real, you know. Okay, what else have I learned? Minimalism is more than design and a tidy room. Yeah, it is. For me, it started with design. It started with Bauhaus. I like Bauhaus a lot. And I was very much into those clear forms and I love the color white, although Bauhaus is not super white. But anyway, I think it's about more than that. As I said, I think sustainability is a very important thing. As a minimalist, I feel kind of obligated to think about that when I am, you know, getting rid of things. How am I going to do that in a sustainable way? Which things do I bring into my life? Are they produced in a sustainable way? So that is one aspect. And the other one is that it's really not just about furniture. For me, minimalism is also about prioritizing how you spend your time, for instance, or prioritizing your relationships with, with whom do you spend your time. What hobbies, what activities do you bring into your life? What do you want to learn? Which languages do you want to speak? And so on. That's what I said. It's like a philosophy of life. It's, it's not just a lifestyle. So at least for me, it's not. All right, maybe this is a good thing to end with. It's about judgment, my last point. In those many years, I learned to not care so much about judgment anymore. I still think, you know, like it's very weird to say, Hey, I'm a minimalist. I mean, that's that's not something I, I talk about when I meet someone. It's not like I'm talking to people about that constantly. And it's also not that I am, you know, telling them that I have a YouTube channel about that topic or that it's like a huge thing in my life because it kind of isn't. It is a general philosophy of life. It's a general mindset. But in my everyday life, I don't constantly think about minimalism. I just do it. The only times that I really notice the difference to the average person is when it's about sustainability, for instance, or when people are complaining about issues that I don't have. And I, I just like in that moment, I think, yeah, that's because I don't, I don't have that kind of stuff. I don't have that kind of issue. I don't need to bring this or that on my travels because we don't own it. So those are the moments when I'm reminded of the fact that, that I am a minimalist, but I still have issues with the term minimalism. And it is weird for me to say that I am a minimalist. I wouldn't normally do that. And I do get some sort of judgment sometimes when I do. And then I feel even more stupid about saying it. Anyway, over the last few years, I really became more ignorant. And I noticed that I say this uh, with a, a little more pride maybe. So I don't really care about that kind of judgment anymore. 
And I even find that people are interested in the topic and that they ask me things because if you say something like that, if you say I'm um, a minimalist or I want to be a minimalist even, you know, like people, you will find that people are interested in that. For instance, when I started using cloth diapers, a lot of mothers asked me how I did that, which ones I used and I even brought other moms to using cloth diapers and they were just average moms and they were thinking like ah, those, those, those are leaky, right? Uh, those don't work. And then I brought some and I showed them that they did work and they were surprised and then they were convinced and then they ordered a bunch of cloth diapers, I guess. That's how it goes sometimes, you know, with the, with the whole sustainability and minimalism thing and everything. Don't be afraid of sharing your experience. Don't be afraid of, of communicating it to your friends, your spouse, your family, especially when it's about presents and stuff that people want to bring into your life. Don't be afraid of saying no and explaining that you want to be a minimalist. And if you feel weird about saying, I'm a minimalist, now you know that I do too. That's it. <laughs>